Today I'm going to be sketching, penciling, and inking this adorable raccoon. And I'm going to be taking two random watercolors from this hat. I don't even know what I'm going to get, so I'm scared. Let's do it. So let's get into sketching out some ideas to color because I don't know what colors I'm working with. It's just going to be a random drawing and it's just going to be whatever the heck I want it to be. That being said, I have been thinking about drawing a raccoon because as some of you know, because some of you do follow me on Instagram, I have a raccoon that lives in the tree outside of my window. Now, I used to see him almost every day back in the winter and even in spring, it was almost every day. Sometimes he wasn't there. Maybe he slept somewhere else, but I would see him just sleeping there every day. And then at night he would go off and go somewhere else. But I actually, since the, since the summer, I haven't been seeing him. I see him maybe once a week if I'm lucky. So I thought it would be really cute if I drew a raccoon. This guy, I mean, raccoons are chunky. But this guy, oh my goodness, he has got, he's got some chonk on him and it's pretty cute. So I, I didn't name him, but I was calling him chonk and then everyone loved that. And I'm talking so much that I kind of can't really focus on whatever I'm drawing. So chonk, like I said, he sleeps in the tree. So I thought it actually might be cuter if maybe I gave him a hammock to sleep in. So maybe if he was just like sleeping in a hammock between two trees or something. Now he just looks like a cat. Definitely gonna have to do some more referencing on what a raccoon looks like because this is clearly not it. I feel like I was trying to focus on drawing and talking at the same time. So let me wrap up. If you don't follow me on Instagram, on my stories, I post this raccoon that sleeps in the tree outside my window and I thought it would be fun to draw, draw a raccoon in memory. Well, I say in memory, like he's dead. He's not dead. I actually don't even know if it's a he or she. No, sure is a raccoon. Now, obviously when I do draw my version of a raccoon, I'm definitely going to be making him a lot more cartoony, but I thought it was good to, um, I don't know, get a better grasp at what raccoons look like. Cause these are really bad. They look like cats. Cats or uh, red pandas, which is not what we're going for. I really like this one. This one's so cute, but I want to do something more silly. Like he's lounging on a hammock or something. So I've got some raccoon studies or whatever. So let's start thinking of an idea for our little guy. I think it would be cute if he, if there was like two trees. I don't know why I keep drawing stumps because it needs to be higher. He's gonna have to be very round, obviously. So I would like to have a whole scene, but maybe that's not gonna happen. So I wanna make sure that chunk's pretty big. I don't want it to be super open with like a lot of sky. I want there to be lots of raccoon action. I find that boring. Let me see if there's some way to create a cute little wreath for him to be sleeping on. So maybe we have this wreath that's also a tree. Ooh, okay, okay. Doesn't have to be realistic, you know? Now I just want to do like a, a very abstract tree thing with lots of like flowers or something. I want Chonk to be in a beautiful wreathy tree with like flowers and things. And it doesn't have to be to scale. And it doesn't have to be a circle. Hmm, I don't like that mouth situation, but we'll, we'll figure it out. It's fine. We'll, we'll figure it out. I really like the way this was turning out at first and then things just got weird and I still really don't know what I want to do as far as giving him a bed. Okay, so the struggle is real. I think I'm going to sit on this and do some brainstorming and I will get back to you guys when I am ready to pencil. Okay, so with a little extra sketching off camera without the pressure, I decided to come up with this winding tree that could act as more of a bed that's like holding him. So let's just get into penciling this on paper because I'm anxious to get started and see what we can come up with. I'm also just really anxious to get those random colors. 
Have I said I was super excited to see what colors I was going to choose? This is the most exciting part about this illustration is coming up with this really nice drawing. You get the line art down and then suddenly it all comes down to what random colors you choose and you have absolutely no control over that. That could also really turn your illustration around. It could really decide on the mood, the temperature of the illustration. And in fact, this particular illustration took quite a turn after I started to color it. It completely changed my whole purpose and view and intention for this illustration. It, it became something completely different and it added a huge story when I picked the colors. It, it was, it was really quite an experience. Am I hyping this up? Maybe. When I go into these challenges, I expect to either get some earthy colors and end up coloring this in a realistic way, or I think I'm going to be getting some random vibrant colors that either don't go together or are just not realistic, like a purple and yellow raccoon. What? That would be so random. So I always go into this not knowing what to expect and just kind of preparing myself for who knows what. In the three random watercolor challenge, I drew humans. So I think animals and plant life are a completely different challenge when it comes to coloring. Now plants do come in different colors, but a yellow plant versus a green plant can completely change what season the illustration is in. So the colors can really change your drawing. And it might sound silly, but that's what makes art so exciting. And it's almost, it's like an adrenaline thing. I don't go out and do, you know, exciting physical things. So art is my excitement. <laughs> Now, I hate to do a plug in this video, but if you are one of my patrons, you do get this line art as a coloring page and you can color it the way you want to color it instead of just seeing me put random colors on it because let's be honest, this could either be a complete success or this can be a complete disaster. And well, we're about to find out, aren't we? <laughs> Here we go. Now that our line art is complete, it is time for us to choose our two random watercolors out of the hat. If you haven't already seen the three random watercolor challenge, you can click up here to watch that. Until then, let's get our two random colors and get to coloring. All right, first up we have, oh my goodness, okay. We have teal. And our second color, now I'm scared, is we have red. <laughs> Red and teal. This should be interesting. All right, uh, let's swatch these colors, see how they combine together, and then get to coloring. So when I got into swatching these originally, I was thinking, okay, cool, a teal and red raccoon. That is going to be a very interesting uh, color combination. I think those colors do go well together, but for a raccoon in a tree, I was just like, hold up. Teal's almost a green color, right? I think teal is technically like a bluish green color and green and red are complementary colors. And when you put complementary colors together, you do get an earthy brown color. So this was already starting to look like, well, it could go two ways. After I started to mix the colors, I got a feel for what sort of colors they mixed in to be. Either a nice reddy brown color or a nice bluish gray brown color. Either way, I was able to turn these really bright, vivid red and teal colors into very earthy colors, which I was really surprised at because those colors change so much when you mix them together. It kind of blew my mind. I'm telling you, you guys, art, art is crazy. After I mixed my two colors together, I realized that I had a lot more colors than just two colors. I had brown, I had gray, I had red brown, gray blue, and I didn't want to just go into a normal gray raccoon on a brown tree. So I was really digging that blue raccoon on D, but I did like aspects from the other three mock-ups. So this is what I ended up going with. So like I said, I really like that bluish color on D, but I didn't want it to be the full teal color. I did want to gray it down a little bit, but I didn't want it as gray as the mock-up 
for the raccoon in A. But when I did end up mixing my colors together, I did end up graying it down way too much. I did want it to be a little bright, but I didn't want that obnoxiously obnoxious teal color. It was just too bright for me. And you guys know me, I'm an, I'm an earthy person. So after I started coloring the raccoon, I tried to add a little more teal to brighten it up. And it is a little more brighter than when I started, but in the end, he was too gray. And this kind of bummed me out because I didn't want to go for a gray animal on a brown tree. And after I started to color in the tree, it was definitely headed in that direction. And it was time for me to go into damage control. So this is where this illustration went from a dedication to chonk in the tree out my window, just a normal raccoon. No, we had to go, we had to go into a different direction. So after I started to brighten things up, that's when I started to get a really fun story for this illustration. And you guys know me, I love adding stories to my illustrations. So to make up for the earthiness that I had added to the raccoon and the top of the tree, I thought, you know, what if I start adding really bright red to this tree and it turns into a gradient so that the base of the tree turns into that really solid bright red color and the grass is going to be the straight teal and everything at the bottom of this illustration is going to be bright and colorful and everything at the top of the illustration is going to be more earthy and essentially dead. So this is where our story comes into play. It's, it's kind of sad, I guess, if you think death is sad, but it's a really fun and interesting story. So after I had colored the raccoon's face and I realized that I had added too much white, and on top of the fact that he was looking pretty gray, and like I said, uh, the top of the image is more on the dead side, I decided that this raccoon was going to be either very old or very dead. I laugh, but you know, you, you, you guys know me at this point, right? Death is hilarious. So either this raccoon has slowly walked his way over to this tree where this tree is also dying, but this tree absorbs any nutrition and stuff from this dead raccoon. So this tree is dead, but he's regaining health from this raccoon. Or this raccoon is disease ridden and he is plopped on top of this tree to die and is now spreading his disease to this tree and now the tree is dead. Which honestly would make more sense because the dead color is spreading from the raccoon. Either way, if you want to ignore the story, that's fine. I just think it looks really cool how it's very bright and colorful at the bottom of this illustration. And as you go up, it gets dead looking. At the very end, I decided to put a circle around this illustration and then put little bubbly circles of color just to add more magical, uh, magical feels to this illustration, I guess. Maybe, maybe the tree is indeed sucking the life out of this raccoon and that's just the magical bubbles of circle of life. <laughs> See, what did I tell you guys? This went from a dedication to the raccoon in a tree at my window to a, a, a dead raccoon. And there you go. I had so much fun with this line art first, two rain and water colors second. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. And now a huge thank you to my wonderful patrons for all of their support. You guys are the best. If you want to be in the credits at the end of my videos, see secret sketches, coloring pages, early access, and more, check out my Patreon by clicking a link in the description. Thank you guys all so much for the support. Bye!